I am so excited to have you join us. Today on a journey into the fascinating world of perception. Have you ever stopped to wonder about the incredible connection between your eyes? And ears? Well, you're in for a treat. Today, we're diving deep into the mysteries of the eye-ear connection, unlocking secrets and uncovering the hidden links that make our sensory experience truly extraordinary. Scara is the outermost layer of the eye and it works to provide support to the eye. It is commonly called the white of the eye because it covers most of the eye and is clear in color. The scara is tough and strong enough to hold its shape and protect the eye. It has small openings all around it, called a scleral foramen, and has several muscles attached to them that control the movement of the eye. It is an important part of protecting other organs inside the eye. The conjunctiva is the protective layer of the eye that covers the scara and lines the inner surface of the eye. It is a thin, film-like covering that helps ensure care of the eye. Conjunctiva is mainly of three types. Bulbar conjunctiva, it covers the scara of the eye and extends adjacent to the eye. Tarsal conjunctiva, it covers the inner surface of the palps of the eye. Fornix, this is the part of the conjunctiva that extends from the scara of the eye and joins with the palps. The conjunctiva primarily helps protect the eye, and it also helps keep the eye from drying out or developing any sensitivity. Cornea is an important part of the eye which covers the outermost part of the eye and its main function is to diffuse light. It acts as the first lens of the eye and helps transmit light into the eye. The cornea is a transparent, crystalline fluid made up of water and protein. It helps in providing oxygen and nutrition to keep the eye alive because there are neither veins nor blood vessels inside the eye. The strategic function of the cornea is to maintain vision so that we can see objects at different distances clearly. Its dedication and proper health are important for good vision. Pupil is the central part of the eye which controls the flow of light. It is located between the corneas, colored layers of the eye, and its size varies according to the oral position of the retina and the level of illumination. When the aperture is small, the amount of light entering the eye is less and hence enlarging the aperture increases the vision. Similarly, when the retina is larger, the amount of light is greater and the aperture of the eye is smaller, causing decreased vision. This function of insight is mostly done with the help of two muscles present in it, which are called insight muscles. Here neurons also play an important role for this work. Lens is an important part of the eye that helps in focusing light so that we can see objects at different distances clearly. It is located in the posterior part of the eye, between the scara and the cornea. The lens is a transparent liquid made up of water and protein. Its function is to amplify and focus light into the eye, allowing for lifelike vision. The cloudiness of the lens is called a positive lens and its increasing cloudiness is called Obstructive lens eh? This happens by changing the mapping scheme of the lens and through inner vision. When the inner vision is larger, the lens has to work harder to focus the vision again and is called an obstructive lens. On the contrary, when the inner vision is small, it becomes easier for the lens to focus the vision with less effort and is called a positive lens. It occurs naturally and helps us see objects at different distances clearly. Iris is the part of the eye that covers the black part of the eye and controls its color. It is the outermost part of the retina and its main function is to control the level of light to change the size of the pupil. The color of the inner tube is called a color and can include black, brown, green, blue, and various shades of gray. This can also be known as the biography of the person as it can help in identifying their personal characteristics. The main utility of the endosperm tube is that it adjusts the level of light to the eye by controlling the amount of light by changing the size of the pupil. When the endoscope grows, the pupil becomes smaller, and when the endoscope shortens, the pupil becomes larger. Thus, it helps protect vision and protects the eye from excessive light. The hammer, anvil, and stapes are three components of the tympanic membrane and are used to block sounds coming from sound sources for the auditory sense of music and other sounds. These are also collectively called the ahyoid bones. Hammer is the outermost part of the tympanic membrane and is a part of the tympanic membrane. Its main function is to be involved in the process of hearing sound when it receives sound from the talismanic tablet and sends it through the anus. Anvil is located below the hammer and is also a part of tilismium goli. Its function is to reproduce the sounds received by the hammer through sound waves. Stirrups are the innermost part of the tympanic membrane and it is also a part of the tympanic membrane. 
Its main function is to mix the sounds received by the anvil with the sounds coming from different sources and transfer them to the inner air in the form of special illumination. These three components are located in the eardrum and together they help the ear hear sounds. Auditory canal is the part of the hearing system located in a person's ear. It is a long tube that runs from the outer surface of the ear to the auricle and finally meets the eardrum. The main function of the auditory system is to properly collect sound and transmit it to the eardrum. These impulsive sounds are combined with the tympanic membrane, where the sound energy is formatted in different ways and delivered to the auditory area of the brain. This surface on the outer surface of the auditory system is soft so that it can absorb and transmit the sounds coming out properly. Another name for this is the external ear and it also helps protect the outer part of the ear. The retina is an important part of the eye that functions to translate visual sources into underlying sounds. It is located in the posterior part of the eye and contains millions of tiny structures called rods and cones. The star conducts the sounds to the innervated cones and rods and connects them with the underlying neurons to deliver the sound to the brain. Here the energy of sounds is formatted in different forms in the auditory area of the brain and this results in our visual experience. The star is unique because it has a very unique energy structure that has the ability to form sounds. It is one of the most important organs of the eye and provides us with characteristic information about color, form, and various sizes. Optic nerve is an important nerve which transmits the sounds coming from the eye to the brain so that we can understand the scene. This male plays an important role in maintaining the vividness of our visual sources. The optic nerve originates from the posterior part of the eye and connects it to the retina. When sounds falling on the retina reach here, the optic nerve transmits these sounds to the hearing area of the brain. The optic nerve has a pair of eyes and contains millions of neurons that help in transmitting sounds to the brain. This nerve passes through the optic chiasm of the brain, which distributes sounds coming from both eyes to the hearing areas of the brain. Any type of damage or blockage of the optic nerve can affect the vividness of the visual. Sources causing vision problems. Thank you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our future explorations.